Hey guys, welcome to part 2. On the last episode, we actually broke out of the first of the middle episode to take a break and to do this. Today we're going to do an informational thing on all the races Skyrim. I probably shouldn't rock my chair like this even though it's actually it's built to do that, which is really cool. We're going to be doing an informational video on the races, my opinions on them. I did a bunch of research on what all each one, you can read it, a bunch of research on what each one's got going for them in my opinion. So there's really no point in me for being small on the camera. So... Make me big! Whoa. I'm too big now. Okay. So, I it might seem like I'm reading off of this a lot because there's a lot going on. Each race... So, let's get started. Each race has its own stat bonuses. It naturally starts with plus 10 in one stat and plus 5 in all the other stats. If you just started this game, this might not mean a lot to you now, so I'm sorry. They also each got their own little different weird little perks and their own natural racial ability. So I'm going to be going over each of those and just my opinions on them in general and what the general opinion I found is on the internet for each one. So let's begin with, let's begin with the High Elf or the Altamir. The Altamir has plus 10 illusion and plus 5 in alteration, conjuration, enchantment, and restoration. From the start, okay, every race has a start, flames and healing. Flames is basic fire. Healing is, you know, you hold it and you heal yourself slowly. It's both pretty nice. However, these guys get fury, which is pretty cool. I, mean, I never used it, but I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, it's cool. They also have the ability Highborn, which, as it says right here, they can call upon Highborn to regenerate Magicka quickly. Basically what it is, it goes 10 times as fast regeneration for 60 seconds. Excuse me? They also, unlike other races, start off with plus 50 magic, which is pretty nice. And as a fun little ability, Thalmor, or, you know, Altmor, High Elves, all those people, they'll get along with you a lot easier, they're a lot less likely to attack you. The Thalmor and the Altmor will like you a little bit more, however the Nords in this place will hate your guts. Now technically this won't stop you from doing any quests or anything, but still it's just like, they all hate me, why do they hate me? Now overall, Altmer are known as... Here there. Altmer are known as like the ultimate mage. If you want to be magic, go no further, be a high elf. All their stats are geared towards it. So, there you go. On to the next one. The Argonian. I was an Argonian the first time I played this, and I can tell you from experience, I had a great time with these guys. Because first off, I'm a lizard. How awesome is that? They got plus 10 lock picking, which, let's be honest, it's not really the best thing to have plus 10 right from the start but they also got plus 5 in light armor they also got plus 5 in light armor alteration pickpocketing pick restoration and sneak they don't have any special spells them and their ability is hiskin you know how the altmer they regenerate hp 10 times faster well this guy regenerates health 10 times faster not to mention the fact that they also have 50 percent resistance in poison which depending on what you're killing is pretty stinking nice I'm sorry, I'm not poison, disease. There is there is a legitimate difference. However, they also got infinite water breathing, which is really useful. There are a lot of like how to describe it. There are like shipwrecks and underwater caves or rivers just in general. You can go to the bomb and find treasure where everyone else they start drowning or you need like an item or a potion or a spell or something. This guy just goes, Psh, yeah, whatever. Just goes straight in, no problem. They also, they don't really talk about this one. Nope. They don't talk about it at all. They got a little bit better punching. So if you're more into using fisticuffs, these guys are kind of nice. Overall, these guys are really deemed as some of the best for sneaking around in assassins. While they're not the best like combat wise, they're pretty good for just general sneakery. You'll have to manually level up one handed or range. I can tell you from experience, his skin, really stinking nice. You're going up against foes that are just like constantly being on you, turn on his skin. Health slowly draws, goes down, draws, goes down. Even with them pummeling you, you still get healed fast enough. It's really stinking nice. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, what else, guys? The weird eyes, weird hair, weird ears. These guys are plus 10 archers, plus 5, and plus 5 alchemy, light armor, lock, pick, and sneak. They have no special spells, and they have the ability to command animal. Command animal is kind of useful. I mean, it's nice for it's like if you're in the wild and you're being like attacked by animals like you wouldn't believe, just go command and then they're your friends. But later on in life, you just, you could care less. 
is just like, pff, yeah, whatever. So really, it's not the greatest of abilities, but it can be useful. So take that as you will. Adjust the camera a little bit. So take that as you will. However, they also got pity. They also got a 50%, 50% resistance to poison and disease. Makes sense, because you know they deal with a lot of animals. Overall, though, if you want a stealth guy that's also an archer, this guy is perfect. Combine that with his alchemy, you know, ability to make potions and poisons and stuff, and you got a guy that can easily take on everyone as an archer. When it says in there, what elves are make good scuts and thieves and there are no fine archers on Tamrail? Hands down, best way to say it. These guys kick butt. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, the Breton. These guys look actually fairly normal, to be honest. They got plus 10 conjuration. Not bad. I mean, I I only really summoned one thing, which you guys will learn about later. But, these guys are pretty good conjuring. They also got pretty good alchemy, alteration, illusion, restoration, and speech. So, they're actually right up there in terms of magic with the High Elves. Their special spell is Conjure Familiar. Goes along well with what they got. And they also have the ability Dragon Skin. Dragon Skin allows them to absorb the magicka, the, uh, to absorb magic the more they get hit. Combine that with their ability to be 25% resistant to magic, and you got a pretty good fighter. These guys are like the ultimate magical tanks. Their natural resistance, their ability to absorb magic, and then to dish it right back out. So if you're also they can just be like tanky. Okay, tanky, you know, just someone who just sits there and just takes hits. No problem. That's this guy right here. He, they're really good at their job. So if you're going for a magical tank that can survive anything, even on the hardest difficulty, which we're gonna be on. This is your man. Excuse me. This is a man right here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, Dunmer! These freaky guys, Dark Elves, because as we know, elves already cheat a lot. Dark elves. They cheat worse. These guys are sweepers in, in their entirety. They got plus 10 destruction, plus 5 alchemy, alteration, illusion, light, and sneak. They also, however, got one of the, the coolest racial abilities. Oh, by the way, they also get sparks as another spell. So, you know, shoot a fire. Ha, no, shoot a lightning, son. Sorry, I got a little carried away. All right, their main ab their ability is Ancestor's Wrath. Basically, Firestorm all around them. Firestorm and believe me It's awesome. It's so much fun to use They also got a 50% resistance to fire and that is incredible overall these guys You can consider them to be mostly geared towards being like sneaky mages or just assassins in general, but really Jack of all trades their ability to make it them really nice to be combatants because you can you run up and sneak with your daggers and whatnot And then oh no things look bad fire. Yeah, I dare you son come near me and their magic fire attacks everywhere also they can be good vampires since vampires you'll learn about this later vampires have like a weakness to fire well 50 they get 50 percent weakness to fire 50 percent resistance to fire cancel that one of your bigger weakness one of your biggest problems is gone they also are really nice against dragons because dragons primarily use fire and ice they like never use lightning so the fact that they breathe fire means you can sit there and take it for twice as long and I'll tell you right now, many times when you're going up against a dragon, they breathe fire on you for two seconds, you're dead. You got four seconds here. And that doesn't seem like a big difference now, but trust me, it is. It makes a huge difference on how things work. But overall, these guys are the perfect all-around fighters. You never know what to expect with them. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, on to the next one. Alright, Imperials. The guys that are trying to kill us right now. And sitting there going, oh my goodness, he's changing forms. Let's see, what do what these guys got? Plus 10 restoration, nice healers. They got plus five block, destruction, enchant, heavy, and one arm combat. Sorry, I should use full nords. Blocking, destruction magic, enchanting, heavy armor, and one arm combat. They also got the ability Voice of the Emperor, which if you're going up against humans, calms them down for 30 seconds. Now you can either, either you can either use this, you can either use this to just make a break for it, or maybe to try to kill him. Uh, or like sneak kill just run over since we're all just like ah, I just run over <laughs> and then you run but pretty good depending on what your situation but I mean don't try using it on like a dragon or something Key. they also got an ability that allows them to find oh here it is anywhere gold coins might be found Imperials always seem to find a few more 
Simple as that. If you're big into getting money in this game, which at first, I'll be honest, you will be, but later on in the game, you could care less. This is what you need. You want to make money? Bam, right there. Now, what do these guys consider? They're really broad. I mean, you can see, like, all their stats. They're nice and varied. Calm, very useful, depending on your enemies and what you're going up against. They're very versatile. You can use them. You use them as like healers, combat mages, defenses, or whatever. But their most primary thing they're good at is what is normally in the game called a paladin. Someone who is this ultimate tank and a healer at the same time. So you know how we have the Breton who is like the anti-mage? This guy's like the anti-physical. And well, kind of a ranger, but I mean heavy armor makes it slow, so there you go. But overall you just kind of, I'm here. This nice big healer. Alright, on to the next one. The Khajiit, the kitty cats. It does not matter how strong you once were, you must remember. This guy was once a kitten. You must remember that. Sorry, I remember seeing that meme once. I was just like, <laughs> thought it was the funniest thing. Alright, these guys start off with plus 10 sneak, plus 5, and plus 5 alchemy, archer, lock, one hand. Alchemy, archery, lock picking, one handed combat, and pickpocketing. They have the, their ability is actually unique because you can infinitely use it. It's called Night Eye. Basically, if there's a dark cave of any sort, just bloop, good eyesight throughout the dark. It works underwater, loads of different scenarios, so it's really nice. However, let's be honest, not very many caves you're going to be running around in, so take that as you will. So in the big scheme of things, it might be kind of useless compared to other ones. However, you also get, as it says right there, all because you can see in the dark at, at will and have unarmed claw attacks. I'm not into fisticuffs, but if you are, Khajiit is also where the party is at. Claws, there's an ability with heavy armor that makes like so your gloves are more powerful. Combine those two together, bam, best fisticuffs in the game right there. And she, um, people are racist against you. In some towns, Khajiit are not even allowed to come in because they're all considered thieves and bandits, but that's okay, you're fine because you're the player character. Told you, this gig, it's nice. But anyway. Oh, that these guys are considered the ultimate assassins in general all their stats are geared towards it either you can run around with one-handed and use a dagger you can use archery whatever you are the assassin plus your kitty cat kitty cat whiskers that's like the funniest thing ever in the world to me i'm sorry all right on to the next one nord yep this is the one that a good friend of mine consistently uses plus he, can't, he could easily look like that in real life. He just got the clothes, changed the hair. He could look like that. Easily, because he's Norwegian. Well, okay, sorry. He's part... You know what I mean. He's very much so European. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should quit being so silly. They got plus tan 10 in two-handed, plus five block, plus five in light armor. Sorry, plus 10, two-handed, plus five in block, light armor, one-handed weaponry, smith, and speech. They got the ability Battle Cry, which will make people freak out for a little bit, which is pretty nice. And they also can resist frost 50%. You know what we talked about earlier with the Dark Elves, how the fact that they can resist frost make them really nice for going up against like dragons? Same thing, except I don't know about you, but it always seems like dragons use ice more than fire. So, oh, and I forgot to mention, you can get necklaces and stuff and enchant them to give it so you can literally have a 100% resistance against ice and fire. So really good for anti-mage depending on what kind of mage you're going up against and overall the people in this place will love you because you're one of them however the Falmor will not like you just because they think you're some slimy human overall what are they mostly very combat orientated except unlike other ones that have like heavy armor you have it's he's really orientated towards a light armor and two-handed couldn't be used as a scout or you also can have like smithing stuff. Speech is pretty good for you know like getting better prices and things. So it's also good for making money. But kind of another well-rounded kind of person. So, so the 50% resistance to frost and fire. Those things kind of still make me go. All right, on to the next one. Orc. Yes. You're a guy. Sorry. You guys got plus 10 heavy armor, plus five block, enchantment. She won. Wow, I can't. My writing is terrible. Plus five block, enchantment, one handed weaponry, smithing, and two handed weaponry. These guys have the ability Berserker Rage, which this ability is awesome. Physical damage, okay, so like not magic, but.
but like arrows and melee. Melee. I keep saying melee, but people keep telling me it's melee, so take that as you will. Take half damage physical. Take. Okay, so people attacking you, you only take half their damage, and you deal double. Yeah. You're running around having a party, Berserker Rage style. These guys, if you're looking for your melee specialist, you're good. Right here. They're geared towards 100%. They also got really good smithing and enchanting, which will allow you to make the best armor, best weapons, everything. I suggest heavy armor, and then you can either go, um, well, if you're going to be using their ability a lot, I suggest two weapons. That way, so it's like, okay, so each weapon does double damage, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just go all out. All right? Also, you get the ability to go to orc strongholds. We haven't really talked about much abilities that are, like, two races, because, um, excuse me. That are like specific to races because look at my piece of paper. I don't really got anything for them. Not very many have like specific things that'll make them like them. But these guys do. They're orc strongholds that are like really good mines. They'll give you, I've, they might give you better prices. I'm not sure about that, but they'll like you a lot more. And um, they, you normally you have to do like a challenge or you have to like prove yourself in battle or something for them. They, they'll just let you in. They're just like, Psh, hey, it's an orc. Yeah, come in, man. We love you. Here, have a drink. So they'll love you there, and that's pretty good. I mean, those places are pretty good for staying in and getting materials and stuff. But overall, melee combatant specialist, this guy right here. Trust me, go with him. However, I'm not going to be him because you'd hear me make Lord of the Rings references all day. You're walking on Saruman. <laughs> okay, sorry. We're almost done. One more. All right, final one. We got Redguard. These guys, once again, jack of all trades. They got plus 10 in one-arm combat and plus 5 in alteration, alchemy, archery, blocking, destruction, and smithing. They also have the ability Adrenaline Rush. Oh, adrenaline Rush. Okay, so before we had the, not the Khajiit, the Argonians who are generate health, the Altmer that generate magic. These guys are generate stamina. So it's just like constant power attacks when you're fighting these guys. And overall though, Jack of all trades. You want to use them for magic? Bam. Want to use them for archery? Bam. Want to use them for one arm combat, which will be your most likely thing since they also got most of the blocking? Bam. Right here. Not to mention the fact, I forgot to say this, 50% resistant to poison. See, things like that, 50% resistant to poison disease, you never really notice those things until they take effect. And then, like, if you don't have the resistant, you're sitting there like, wow, this poison's really killing me. And then when you have resistance, you're just kind of like, Oh, hey, I'm, bo I'm poisoned. Yeah, thanks a lot, super ability. So, it's not really something you really notice, but it's still there. So, it's good for you to know. Alright, and also, they're pretty good defensively. If you want to use them, as kind of like, to sit there and take a few hits, while you let your... See, I keep saying, like, normally, is when you're playing multiplayer games, that you want someone to be a tank and a scout. I'm just giving you good examples and stuff, okay? Go play Skyrim online. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, that's mean. But... These guys are good for taking hits. So overall, let's just do a quick review. Argonian, these guys are pretty good assassins. I can say from experience. It's fun being an assassin with them. Alright, and then you got the Ultimer, High Elf. These guys, Mage Powerhouses. You got Bosner. See, mine's an alphabetical. There's not. Bosner, what else? Awesome rangers, awesome scouts, quick on their feet, everything. Bretons. These guys are the magical tanks. Hands down. Dunmer. Sweepers of <laughs> sweepers of Skyrim. These guys fire everywhere. Imperials, these guys are like the physical paladins of the team. Calm everyone down, heal yourself up, get right back into the fight, take hits all day. Khajiit, if you're looking for the sneaky guy. This guy's it. No defense whatsoever. But he's... Wait. Yep, I was right. No defense whatsoever, but he's the sneaky of the team. Got the Nord. These guys are pretty solid stuff. They're pretty solid stuff. Good two-handed weaponry combat. Ability to freeze and freak people... Uh, to resist being frozen and freak people out. Go no further. Then you got the Orcs. You're looking for a powerhouse? The powerhouse melee-wise? Go no farther top of the line no one you'll constantly hear them say no one passes an orc believe them no one passes an orc these guys are good and then finally got the red guard another form of sweeper but focusing more on melee combat oh, 
no, that's actually not true. See, it's like you got the red guards, like the physical sweeper. Dunmer, it's like the magical sweeper. You know what I mean? So overall, that's my opinions on them. And I know a lot of you are wondering. So I'm just going to do this back and forth for like, drum roll. Oh, no drum roll. So drum roll, what race am I going to be? Well, I can tell you right now, since the first time I played, I was an Argonian. and I'm not going to be them. But I'll just let you guys find out. And during, between this episode, sorry, it sounds weird to say this. This episode and the episode before it, since literally I'm doing part two in the middle of part one, I'm going to be customizing my Argo, not my Argonian, my whatever it's going to be. I'm not doing Argonian. So that he looks how I want him, and that always takes a little while. So, we're going to be figuring that mess out. I hope I can be informative to you. If you guys have any questions, just comment, and I will tell you my opinion to the best of them. I don't know, maybe some of the best education you'll get will just be from asking me a question. So, yeah, see you then.